All right, so uh, the meeting's been called to order at six o'clock. Um, welcome everybody, and I see a lot of initials on the bottom, so I'm guessing we've got some townspeople, so welcome. Um, thank you to my colleagues and Marlene for, for being here today. Our, our second virtual slash remote meeting, so um, thanks to everybody. It's kind of the world we're living in now. Um, so we'll move right into the agenda, and uh, I would ask my colleagues and Marlene if there's any um, announcements that they would like to make or need to make. I would just like to say um, a thank you to John and Patty Hens because they came up with the oh. idea of um, townspeople putting candles or lights out Sunday night, um, just sort of as a to show some hope and some some solidarity and being in this crisis all together and I drove around town and it was really nice. It was really nice. So um, kudos to them for, for doing that. Yes, thank you. That was a nice, uh, a nice event. Luminarium in April, it's nice. Was there anything else, Diana, that you had from an announcement perspective? I do not, thank you. You're welcome. Ed, did you have anything? No, I'm good. Okay, how about you, Marlene? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, and, and, and I don't either. I know we, uh, the only thing I want to touch on is is coming up as our next topic of discussion anyway. So mm -hmm. um, just want to put that out there. Um, I, I do want to read just for the public's um, knowledge that uh, all the participation at the town meeting for the Hatfield Select Board, we welcome everyone to its meetings and all of our public meetings for the town of Hatfield. All regular and special meetings of the boards and committees of the town shall be open to the public and shall conform to open meeting law, which is why we're doing what we're doing tonight, given the circumstances um, with COVID-19. Executive sessions are closed to the public and will be held only as prescribed by the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It is important to recognize that the open meeting law affords the opportunity to listen to the proceedings, but not necessarily participate. During meetings of the select board, an attempt will be made to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting the required business of the Hatfield Select Board. So I just wanted to read that, which is what we've been reading at all our meetings that, well, when we used to have them in person, actually. So uh, I didn't see any minutes to be approved, or did I? I were they separate? That's yeah. okay. I know yeah, we kind of use a template for our, okay. All right, so we will move right into our um, posted business, which is the, the first topic is the COVID-19 information update. Um, Marlene, I didn't know if you had anything, but I, I would just say that uh, hopefully everybody, the townspeople have signed up to receive the automated messages that, through the town. And in particular, this time, this time of year or this circumstance, um, we, we uh, the select board and the board of health, Carrie Flaherty uh, and Bob Flaherty, emergency management director, have been sending out Monday updates mm -hmm. as to where we as a community stand uh, with the coronavirus, uh, where we stand as far as uh, the people that have been tested positive, uh, updating the public with any sort of information we have uh, from MEMA or the governor's office. And we're trying to do our best to keep everybody abreast of, of what we find out as we find it. So uh, hopefully the people listening tonight and the people that are gonna be watching this uh, in the future um, are receiving those calls. And if you're not and you haven't signed up, you can go to the fire department and, and register the, the number or numbers that you want to receive that message. Not only given the current circumstances, as I mentioned, but anything that's happening in, in the future or any sort of an emergency call that we need to send out, it's certainly good to be uh, to have your number uh, registered with, with the uh, emergency management team. So just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, before we go on any further, I, I did, uh, because it wasn't on my sheet or I didn't see it. Is there anybody on this call tonight for public forums? And we do need people to mute their phones if they're not speaking. Actually, I'm sorry, I was going to mention, ask people to, just as a reminder, to mute their their microphone. So is there is there anybody that would like to speak tonight on the public forum portion of tonight's Board of Selectmen meeting. Oh, 
Okay. Hearing none. Um, okay, so I don't know who we, there is a way of muting people. There is, and uh, most people that are not participating in this meeting, they are not on the agenda. I can see they, they are. Um, they look, that voice. sounds like Bob's voice. And the Cemetery Commission, Bob, Bob Flaherty and Jonathan Bardwell are okay. on, and they, they will, you know, during this meeting, the board will be discussing filling a vacancy. Okay, well, they're up, they're up on, they're on deck right now. So, right. Um, oh, where I thought, can I just, I'm sorry, Brian, can I interrupt? Okay. I, I yeah. thought we had a little bit more on the COVID update. I mean, I guess uh, I just want to mention, of course, the, the directive that came from Governor Baker's office today, mm -hmm. um, canceling school for the rest of the year, um, which is, you know, in my opinion, really significant and probably completely appropriate. Um, but I just want to acknowledge, you know, the school department and the teachers who, you know, that means another month of this, um, this new way of teaching and staying in touch with their students. And so um, I just want to acknowledge um, them for, for what they're doing because it's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, I'll actually, thanks, Diana, because a lot of people at this point might not have even realized that because I think the official announcement was today, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was right? just, it was, I think, at the noontime. Yeah, it was at noontime. So all Massachusetts schools have, have been postponed or Cancel, I guess would be the right word, till fall. So I'm sure there'll be much more um, to follow from a, from a state perspective, but to follow up on Diana's point, we, uh, we do appreciate, uh, especially the people with children in the schools, do appreciate what the yeah. teachers are doing and, and the parents for that matter. Um, so uh, I, I think we probably all had an under, a feeling that this was probably gonna happen. And uh, it's kind of a bummer in many respects, but it's totally understandable uh, from a safety perspective that it's probably or it is the right thing to do. I mean, you know, it, it's just we're in uncharted waters, so everyone's doing their best and, and erring on the side of caution and certainly uh, keeping keeping people away from one another, which is still the uh, the directive. Um, by the governor and the town and the board of health of the Hatfield is to still maintain, um, you know, cover your face uh, with masks when you're out in public and to maintain social distancing. So, um, so thank you for that, Diana. Marlene, did you have anything to add to the COVID-19? Um, well, yeah, I had thought perhaps you would, would cover the uh, information that we had received today um, from, from the governor and the lieutenant governor. Um, and I know that Senator Comerford will be uh, hosting a conference call tomorrow, um, tomorrow afternoon. So I probably will. I have not joined hers yet. I've joined others, but not her, her conference call. I think Diane, you have, and I know Ed has. Yeah. Yes, we, and it was it was really great, very informative. She's responsive as always. Um, you know very concerned and had some good information and answers for questions and whatnot and actually reached out to me about something today because I had raised the issue if they would extend deadlines and things that we were under for our mass works grant and so they reached out today to say if we had heard anything and I said we really hadn't reached out to DHCD yet because it wasn't, I guess we didn't really need to worry about it just yet, but that may at some point be something we have to look at and think about just depending on, you know, because there's another funding piece to this and how sure. right. elections are held and all of that. So, um, but, uh, you know, I'm, Ed can speak to the meeting as well, but it was, I, I, I thought it was terrific. Marlene, can I just butt in one second while we're talking COVID so that I can go back to work? Yeah, thanks, Carrie. I was going to, I was trying to see if there was a way I could hit you up on a instant message, yeah. but I, I couldn't I'm figure, sure, so I, I couldn't figure it out. So yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> no worries. Um, just so that everybody can be updated. I did your camera's put really a letter close. today. Your camera's really huh? close <laughs> to your face, by the way. <laughs> it's because I'm standing, I'm holding my phone. <laughs> um, 
I um, updated a letter that was sent out. Uh, Key put it on the social media page today, and Lydia put it on the town website for those that are on here today. Um, the town offices at this point still need to stay closed and will remain closed no sooner than opening than May 18th, and we'll rediscuss that again, obviously, as a whole. Um, so that May 4th deadline's been pushed off to at least May 18th at this point. Um, and... Obviously, we've discussed the schools are closed, the parks and playgrounds are going to continue to stay closed, and that's going to be probably beyond May 18th. And just for the general public, we have not ruled out summer rec for the kids. Um, it's just I can't make a decision right now without more guidance from the governor and mm -hmm. how much further numbers are going to be and stuff. We really have to have a straight good two weeks decline in numbers. And the governor gives us those updates, obviously, every day. But we have to have that before I can make, I and the rest of the board can make a decision on if we're going to allow summer rec or not. Um, I have been talking with Danielle from the rec department, and she reached out and asked. And I said that as soon as I have the answer, I will get it to her so that we can get information out to parents and hopefully get kids signed up, especially now that these poor kids are missing the rest of the school year. Having summer rec for at least the K through six or whatever would be good for them to be able to have a source to do something over the summertime if we can allow it. And Kerry, Governor Polito alluded to that this Absolutely. afternoon. Um, but I just also, I, I believe, you know, it's also a decision at the, at the local level. Um, but I, I wanted to just add, um, I just lost the thought. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. If anybody hasn't had a chance yet, um, and in today's, it would have been yesterday's MEMA report, there is a link um, to access the DPH dashboard. Um, it, right. That is that is wonderful. I, yep. I have and it's, to and look it's at where that. all the details are. Everybody, if you go to the MassGov page, there's a whole thing on COVID, and you can get into everything. You yeah. can get all the details that you'd ever want are on there, and there's stuff to link you into the CDC also. So anybody that's looking for information definitely can get it from there. Mm -hmm. um, two quick things, and then I promise I won't talk anymore about COVID. Um, one, I know the Council on Aging was reaching out to try to get people who are making masks and they're working with the police department and hopefully getting those out to people in the public. Um, just so the public knows, we are not giving out N95 masks. There's been some inquiries to that. N95 masks are specifically for first responders and emergency personnel and hospitals, and they're at a very low availability right now. So we will not be giving those out to the townspeople. Um, though, if anybody has them, those really should be getting donated to hospitals or to fire departments and EMS and stuff like that. Those really are not for everyday general public use. Um, so that's one thing for people that might be pay watching tonight. Um, and the other thing is that, um, again, if you have questions or concerns or anything, please feel free to reach out to us. Even though the offices are closed, you can call the town hall and do extension 105 for the Board of Health. And um, he has been very good about getting messages to us and stuff like that. So I can I answer them as fast as I possibly can. Um, but just realize that it takes some time. I'm trying to homeschool and work and take care of the Board of Health responsibilities all at once. So if I don't answer back to people right away or one of the other board members doesn't, just don't take it personally. We will get an answer back to you. Great. But that's Thanks, all Carrie. I have to say for tonight. <laughs> that's okay. Thanks. Thank we you, Carrie. We appreciate Carrie. the update. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, yep. Carrie. Thanks. Thanks for everything you're doing, Carrie. Yeah, no thank you. Okay. Um, did, uh, Diana, Ed, Marlene, does anybody have anything else regarding the COVID-19? Uh, no. Can I say something, Brian? Uh, yeah. It's Lydia. Oh, hey, Lydia. Hey. The only other thing I wanted to add is that if people are signed up for e-alerts on the town website, that every time I post something about COVID-19, I check the e-alerts e and it automatically goes to anyone's email that has signed up. So you would automatically get those notices that Marlene, that you send to me mm -hmm. every post. They would automatically get them if they're signed up for e-alerts. Oh, huh, that's funny. I thought I was signed up for e-alerts, but I don't get them through that mode. Well, um, when you sign up for e-alerts, there's a whole list of things you can pick. Right. 
you want to you want to get noticed on. Um, okay. It could be selectmen's news. It could you could have just signed up for news. There's urgent alerts, so it depends okay. on what you sign up for, what you will get. So you're not getting everything. You're only getting what you're interested in. Right. So townspeople should maybe take a look at if they're already signed up, what they're signed up for too. Right. Uh, thank you. Well, if, while we're on the topic, then I would say that townspeople who are going to see this tonight and in the future should also understand that if they have not gotten an email or a phone call, then they aren't signed. They aren't. Uh, they either aren't signed up or it's not working properly. That that they're to be notified through that code red system. So, um, if you think that you should have been getting these things, definitely you know follow up with. Is it you, Lydia, or is it actually with Bob? Well, I, I do the e alerts for the. Okay. Um, Town website. I think right. calling is through the fire department, Gary. Right. Yeah, right. but it's just a coordinated effort as far as what people want. You know, people should just when they're watching this and say, "I haven't heard anything in three weeks." You should know that the last three Mondays, an e uh, notification went out to the townspeople. So if you haven't gotten anything, then uh, you're not signed up or yeah. something's wrong, and you should follow up on it. And okay. if you go ahead, Karen. You're frozen. If for some reason somebody can't get on a computer to do that, yes, they can call the fire department and the fire chief needs to get their name. All right, so I think I'm going to decipher what Carrie just said, which was if you <laughs> if you call the fire department and get and and get the voicemail, just leave your name, uh, why you're calling, and the phone number where uh, I guess the phone number where you'd want to be reached for a code red, and then you would do just the uh, you would do a similar thing. I would imagine Lydia, if it's okay, if you want to be on the e alerts, the email alerts, then you would contact the town clerk's office. Um, I don't know if you have to fill out a form or if you take it over the phone. No, they I, could, they do it right. They do it right online. They go on the website. They can do it online. Okay. There, there's a little button that says sign up for e-alerts and or notifications. They click on it and it walks them right through it. Even better. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on, we do have um, some appointments to the uh, cemetery commission and the local cultural council next on our agenda Ryan so um uh, because the vacancy on the cemetery commission is uh, an elected position this will require the uh, board of selectmen and cemetery commission to vote so joint meeting, joint meeting. Mm -hmm. okay so I, I guess I would ask the, the cemetery commission maybe to uh, make a comment step or, forward. or <laughs> step forward. So we received two notifications uh, about uh, two interested parties looking to join the cemetery commission uh, to fill the vacancy from Jola Valley have needing to resign uh, about 45, 50 days ago at this point. Uh, we had one from Lucinda Williams was the first one that came through. And then another one that came through was John Pease. Um, we we reached out to both of them between Jonathan Bardwell and myself separately. Um, and Joe Lavalle had also talked to Lucinda um, right around the time that his resignation was official. And um, she expressed that being that she's across from the Bradstreet Cemetery and she's very well versed in the history, she would be very interested. Uh, we did have a cemetery commission meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago out in the front steps of the town hall and, and uh, the general consensus was that we were going to recommend Lucinda Williams be uh, appointed to the cemetery commission to fill Joe LaValle's spot. How did okay. we... Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, was somebody else speaking? Is that no, said, does that have to be in a motion from the cemetery commissioners to us? It, I would it think it would be a, so it I think it's a recommendation. Board. Right. Our recommendation, and I believe it has to be a motion from the board as the appointing authority. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to accept Lucinda Williams as cemetery commissioner. Second. 
Okay, so uh, motion's been made and seconded to appoint Lucinda, and that's to um, replace Joe, and it's for an additional, it's it's one an elected year. position, there's one year remaining on that particular elected position. Is, am I correct in stating that? So that is I just correct. wanted to, okay. So is there any further discussion? I know, Jonathan, I know Jonathan's on here. I don't know if he had anything to add. It has to be a roll call vote. Right. right. Thank you, Lydia. Did anybody else? Um... Is Jonathan is on. I see that he's present. Okay. He may not have. Um, may not have a camera or audio. Okay. So well. Maybe the... If he right. could turn his microphone on, if that's possible. Mm. Yeah, I don't. No problem. So the motion's made and it's a roll call vote. So um, to appoint Lucinda. So um, there, please state uh, yay or nay in your name. So Moriarty, aye. Zinal, aye. Jaworski, aye. Moriarty, okay. aye. Okay. Jonathan, no. Uh, okay. Lydia, you good? Yep. Okay. Um, so, uh, welcome Lucinda and Joe, thank you for all your years of service on the Cemetery Commission. We appreciate it. Um, all right, we also would like to add real quick, yes, Joe Lavelli has agreed to still help us out and, and really continue doing a lot of the things that he was doing. He loves what he does, um, but he, so he's still going to stay and help us out with a lot of the different things. He just, uh, Legally, he can't stay on cemetery commission being the town moderator. So that was part of why he had to to step away. But he's still going to help us and he's still going to do a lot of the work because he really loves what he's doing. And Jonathan, I really appreciate what he's doing for us already. So thank you, Joe. Thank you. Hey, can I just add for a second? Um, you know, we're still going ahead with it, but Kai Eno has all of the mapping information and she's working on it from remote right now. And uh, in the next few weeks, we should see all of Brad Street and all of Main Street maps online for people to access as well. That's taken like 15 years to get there. And we're, she has everything now to start posting that. So people can look up a lot of data and information as well as funeral homes too. That's terrific. Thank, again, thank Thanks. you, Joe, and all the commissioners for that and Key as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Bob. Um, next, under appointments, we also had uh, appointments to the um, Cultural Council. Yes, um, Brian, did you see, I did send a, a second appointment today to the board? Yes, I did, yes, okay. I did see that, thank you very much. You're yeah. welcome. So, um, is there somebody, is there anybody that wanted to speak to that besides the Board of Selectmen as far as the Cultural Council goes? Um, we weren't expecting the Cultural Council to join okay. to join us, um, but each of these um, appointments are for a three-year term. Okay. So what well, we're, so the direct, the recommendation from the Cultural Council to the Board of Selectmen is uh, Deborah Nemitz, um, I hope I said that right, and Kathy Ziemer. Mm-hmm. Um, to be appointed, each of them to be appointed for a three-year term on the um, Cultural Council. I'll make a motion that we appoint um, Deborah Nimitz and what was the other name? Zemer? Zemer. Uh, Kat, Kathy. Yeah. Kathy Zemer to the local Cultural Council. I'll second that. Okay, so a motion's made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Okay, just like to thank uh, both ladies for um, for being part of the uh, Cultural Council Committee. So thank you in advance. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, so I know we have our meeting in about five minutes with the um, Finance Committee. And, and we can either wait till later or if you want to give us a little uh, update on the town hall building renovations or if that's coming from Marlene under continued old business. Up to you guys. If you need more than five minutes, we can do it after our meeting or, or later on. 
Mm, any, hi any highlights? I mean, just uh, yeah. the elevator is looking good. The, the driveway, the, the ramps looking good. The lighting, the lanterns, the lamps are looking good. The, the wrought iron fencing. I mean, it, it, it really looks nice when you go by town hall. Mm -hmm. um, just to see the renovations and where they stand right now. Um, so it, where are we with the elevator, by the way? Are we so pending certification and a phone and all that, yes. or is that? So we're waiting on the fire, fire pump installation. Okay. And once that's done, um, then there'll be an inspection of that. And we're just waiting on the inspection of the elevator. <coughs> and understanding is the state schedule is... Um, is quite full. I mean, they this this was scheduled some time ago, right, Ed? And um, just waiting on it. It was, you know, push, not pushed out intentionally. It just their their schedule is very busy. And this is for the final inspection to get signed off on, so that it's for the elevator. For the elevator, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So the West End egress uh, is in progress, and so there there's still some items to be taken care of, and, and they are um, working on the punch list as well. Right. Okay. And it almost seems like the end's in sight. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Thank you both for um, yeah. you know your ongoing uh, work on that. I it's I, I appreciate it very much. Yeah, I, I echo Ed. Diana's sentiments. We we appreciate it. It's nice to have uh, both of you there, um, Ed, with your background at UMass, and Marlene, the your skills you bring as a town administrator. So um, so thank you for for being the the go betweens, the, the conduits for us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, so um, we can, I'll start, I can kill a minute talking. So uh, we're meeting with the Finance Committee and Melanson Heath uh, in one minute. So uh, I guess I'll just ask the Finance Committee if in fact they are present. I, I saw Pat earlier, um, Squante from, from Melanson Heath, but I don't know that everybody from the board uh, the finance committee, excuse me, is here yet? Um, so Diane Brzezowski is yeah. on. Kim Baker. Okay. Uh, let's see. Daryl Williams. Daryl is there. Okay. I see Lucinda. So I wasn't sure if it was Lucinda or Daryl. Okay. And then um, is, is Sean on? I don't see him logged on yet. Um, and Betsy? Betsy Ryder is. I see Betsy. Okay. Daryl, are you okay if we start, um, even if we don't see Sean on, or shall we give it a minute? Or Yeah, no, I, um, let's, let's give, let's give Sean a couple, uh, another minute, um, before we get started, if that, if you're okay with that. Yeah, I think so. Um, and is Lori on as well, Marlene, from? Lori, uh, Lori and, and Pat, yes, as we know, Pat, okay. Lori is on, yes. Hi, Lori, nice to meet you. I don't think we've met in person yet, so this is about as in person as we can do to, to meet somebody these days, I suppose. So. And Lori, Lori's having um, a little bit of technical difficulty with getting a camera and the, and the microphone. She was texting me uh, earlier, so she she is on. I'm not sure if she's going to be able. You know, to we're all going to be experts with the whole uh, computer right. working remotely thing, and uh, right. eventually, then it'll be time to go back to work, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever that looks like. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right. exactly. Right. Well, I, I haven't uh, Pat. You and I have met, but I haven't met Lori previously, so I was. Sean is oh, on. Okay, so so thank you both for uh, you know what you're doing for Hatfield. We appreciate it. We know there's a lot of work, um, but we, you know, yep. we're getting there. You're getting there. So. We're getting there. Right. Yeah. Good news, huh, Pat? Um. Yep. Oh well, then look at Daryl's Daryl's head picked up when he heard that. <laughs> good news. So. Well, um, <laughs> um, very we've close. heard this. Be we've heard this before. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm but you haven't heard it from me. Yeah, you haven't heard it from me. So. There you go. Yeah. All right. So 
Yeah. yeah. All right. So why don't we, um, Marlene, how do we, or Pat, how do you guys, uh, or Daryl, who, who wants to sort of kick this off? We're, we're waiting for an update from, from yeah. Milan's and Heath. And so I don't know, Marlene and Pat and Lori, do you guys want to sort of be the ones that speak to that at this point and get us um, rolling? Sure. I, you know, okay. I can let you know, um, you know, it's kind of a general topic. So I assumed everyone would want to just to understand where where we are in the process. So please, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so just from an overview for anyone who's not um, familiar with with the process of how we sort of even got here, um, the town had hired us to do the outsourced accounting function, what Bay State had been doing for you in the past. <clears throat> um, the town hired us to do that for fiscal year twenty. And the understanding at the time was that um, fiscal year 19 would be uh, closed and rolled forward into FY20 and that um, Bay State would do the balance sheet and Schedule A and the other reporting requirements for FY19 um, and have cash and the receivable accounts reconciled to at least within um, where they had been in the past. Uh, so that was the understanding, and <clears throat> um, that process of closing 19 um, dragged on for uh, quite a bit, and um, the town, you know, followed our suggestion, really, too, of, of um, just trying to move forward without Bay State. So um, we have a separate contract to close 19 um, and, and do those things, close 19, roll it, um, and attempt to reconcile the cash and receivables um, and do the balance sheet for free cash and the Schedule A. So we started that process um, maybe, I don't know if it was two months ago, I feel like it was less than that, but around that time. Um, and so where we are now on for fiscal 19 is um, the balance sheet and the Schedule A have been drafted. Um, Lori Lori is the one who's working most closely with departments and um, running the reports and making adjustments and so forth. And I'm, you know, so she and I are just working together to make sure that the balance sheet has everything it needs to. Um, our uh, plan and, the, and the, the thinking right now, given where we are, where are we at 21st, so it's Tuesday. I, I would, I think it's safe to say that we'll have the balance sheet submitted by the end of the week. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm hoping within the next day or two, but there's a couple of things that I want to try to resolve um, so that <clears throat> the town isn't um, hurt uh, more than, you know, it, it, and when I say hurt, when DOR does their free cash calculation, they deduct certain things, including um, things that might be uh, deficits in, in um, other funds, grants or revolving funds. Um, they deduct for any variances. Uh, in cash, for example, uh, the general ledger compared to the treasurer, um, they would, and they'll deduct for any variances in receivables, general ledger compared to the collector. And these, you know, you, you uh, in prior years, it, there's, there's not a real difference in 19 in, in terms of that. Um, so we're trying to just minimize that and make sure that you're only raising or being, you know, having your free cash uh, hit for only the things that it really should be hit for. So that um, I'm, I'm thinking another day or two with um, our analysis, we'll have that uh, done and submitted. We're not at a point, unfortunately, where I'm comfortable giving um, out any kind of an estimate of free cash. Part of, um, part of the um, challenge has been on the receivable accounts, uh, we, we do have the cash reconciled to within the same variance that has existed for a number of years. Um, that our plan, our plan with any of these variances is to try to keep the variance at least the same for all of fiscal 20. And then when we get to the end of 20, we'll make an adjustment um, and then move forward. Um, but by the end of FY20, our plan also includes um, trying to put in place some processes and um, forms and um, working with the treasurer, collector, and assessors departments to make sure that we're all using the same terminology, that we all understand what we mean when we say 
you know, a warrant or, you know, the receipt or an abatement or just to make sure we're, we all are talking about the same thing. Pat, um, yes. what is the variance that we've um, had for the past several years that you're saying we're aiming for? Uh, well, for the cash, the cash variance has been around 50,000. Okay. Um, the receivable variance um, is, I, I really, it's hard for me to say right now what that variance actually is um, for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, uh, the town's receivable balances have not really been reconciled between the collector and the general ledger um, for at least several years. Okay. The prior auditor, uh, or the prior auditor, the current auditor, um, uh, Tony Roselli, when you look at the audit report, when you look at the audit opinion, um, he's actually disclaiming an opinion on receivables. Okay. Um, Okay, so everybody, uh, you yeah. guys are aware of that, which is great. Yep. Um, right, so, you know, he, he's not looking into that. Um, base eight, I, we didn't see a reconciliation that Bay State had done. Um, we are comparing the general ledger to totals that the collector provided to us of um, the balances that are due by levy year and tax title and motor vehicle and so forth. So uh, we're, we're, we're just comparing to a number. Um, our plan, pre, you know, pre-pandemic was to um, go to, actually for Lori and I to go down and sit with Sharon and just go through the process. You know, sometimes what happens with reports of outstanding receivables, particularly, is it, it um, you can get an incorrect balance depending on which report you're running or how you set the parameters for a report. And part of what I want to do is I, I want to make sure I understand um, what, what what the data is that's being pulled into this outstanding report and make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. Um, so, but I, it's almost impossible to do that remotely. Um, you know, Sharon is, is just crazy busy, just, you know, trying to keep everything else going there. So, um, and, you know, we're bugging her constantly for, for things. Um, so, so right now it's more of a raw kind of comparison and um, we need to do a little bit more work before, um, before we come out with what we think are the, the, what are going to be the variances that are just going to be part of the free cash submission because we, we just don't have a, a reasonable way to, to try to narrow that down in time to get the free cash submitted. So you have a number that you can at least use. Um, so we're, that's our biggest holdup, um, I feel like right now. Um, but we are, we, we will get to a point before the end of the week where um, we're gonna do the best that we can with it. And then we're gonna have to punt. And um, just, we, you have to move on. I mean, we're, you know, three months away from the end of FY20. So because of the time that we spent um, working on 19, which was absolutely necessary, um, it's just delayed us a little bit in terms of processing the fiscal year 20 um, transactions. So, um, Pat? Yes. Before you go on to 20, can I ask a couple questions about 19? Sure. Um, school choice, I know that was a um, uh, an issue. Um, <laughs> And I was just wondering if, if you were able to reconcile any of those numbers. Okay. Um, my memory on the school choice, we, we spent a fair amount of time uh, working with the school department on school choice and uh, some other of their, of their funds. And um, what was clear to us is that fiscal year 19 activity rec uh, agrees between the, gen the town's general ledger and the, and the schools. And I think there was a um, misunderstanding possibly about which number the school should be looking at in terms of um, what's the town's balance. Um, because there were some timing adjustments, some accrual uh, entries that were made okay. or included on the school, on the town side when they were saying, when they were telling the school, this is our balance, it actually included some accrued revenue. Right. Um, okay. And then that um, wasn't taken into account. Um, really correctly 
and I think that's where the discrepancy came from. So I, I think, and I believe the superintendent, and I don't know if O'Reilly's on, on this um, call, but, and I wish Lori could, could speak to it, or maybe you can text me, Lori, but I think we're resolved on the school choice. I think there's still a variance, but it, the variance is pre-19. Um, okay. Lori, text me if you, um, it's a little frustrating when she can't chime in. Yeah, um, and, and, and part of the reason I ask is, you know, they were at one point at, at the last meeting, Sharon thought that maybe there was some rollover um, school choice money from previous years that would be available when we start doing fiscal 21 budgeting. Right. And the superintendent at the time, John at the time said he didn't think that that was going to happen. And so I was just, that's part of the reason for the question. So as we right. think about 21, right. you know, are we going to have to find more money or, you know, just right. how that goes? John right. is in attendance with this meeting. Riley is not, but John is. I was aware John would be available. Yeah. Um, and Lori's texting me. And I believe there were corrections that need to be made uh, in general ledger. And, I, and we did that. And I, I think we're on the same page, but... Honestly, I can't tell you what that balance is right now, no, but I, okay. yeah, and I, um, but we, we, I, I think we are in agreement with the school on, on where we are and we've corrected the misunderstandings and, and there were adjustments. There were things that were misposted in the general ledger that need to be uh, corrected. John Robert, I, can you respond to that? Are you on the same page? I, I see that John is with us. He is. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. I, I think what, what they're saying is correct. Um, it looked like, uh, I think one of the summer, if I'm not mistaken, right. it might have been a payroll or something that was posted, an extra payroll or something that should have been posted a different fiscal year. And, yeah. and then I think there was uh, about 140,000 that was uh, attributed, I think, towards Chapter 70 or something like that. But basically, I think we are, I think we were able to reconcile it yeah. It's not a case where there's extra money, but I think it's a case where um, pretty much what the school thought we should have had, I think pretty much we are close to that balance now. That's, okay. my, that's my memory of it. And that's great news because when we last met, it was it was quite a discrepancy as to you know what what you were being told, John, versus you know when, until um, Pat and her team did their thing. Uh, to bring it up, and it, it's, it's great news to see that you guys have reconciled, you know, for the most part, and and are close and and have uh, have resolved that, or or will give us the final number in the next week or so, because that was a uh, that was a that was a huge difference in monies um, when we all spoke about this back a couple of weeks ago. So um, thank you. I know how much time uh, not only um, Pat and Lori put into it, probably others at Melanson Heath, but also John, you and Riley and, and Christy, whoever else was helping you. So yeah, that, that uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking this one, ran, I think in, in the end, this one was certainly worth all the time and effort everybody put in. Mm. Yeah, I want, I want to particularly thank Riley put a lot of time into it. Yeah. And Brenda helped out too. Oh, and, and thank you, Brenda, as well. Right, mm -hmm. okay. Betsy, are you all set with the school choice question? Yes, or? thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so, so thank you for that information. So, I, Pat, I, we, you know, we didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, you oh, were on a roll, but and but <laughs> um, thank. We like that kind of news. So, thank yes. you very much. Right. Right. Um, yes. So, here. so Pat, can I just re recap what you said or some sure. of what you said? So, you're hoping to have the balance sheet and schedule A. By the end of the week, maybe the beginning of next week, mm -hmm. um, which means that you, you'll eventually be submitting our for our free cash number, and 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 we'll essentially closing the books on 19. Is that correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. Yes, and that yeah, I'm I'm hoping by um, by the end of the week we'll have all the reports submitted, and then either by the end of the week or Absolutely. Sometime within the following week, we will um, actually in the system close, you know, within the software, close FY19 so the balances can roll into FY20 and then we can start 
um, trying to reconcile the balances um, for FY20, the receivable and cash balances for FY20. At, yeah. at what point does the audit for 2019 take place with Roselli? Yeah, that I've been talking to Tony about that. Um, he had the town scheduled for, I think, the third or fourth week uh, of April, actually. And the, I mean, what the audit needs, auditor needs is the general ledger to be closed, which it would be. Um, and when, when Lori and I are good with FY19 and we close it, I will send him a report that I know he can, you know, I mean, I am an auditor, so I've been doing it for 30 years. I know what he needs. Mm -hmm. So I will we can send him reports that can at least get him started. Um, and he can do probably, he could probably do, you know, 80 or 90% of the audit remotely. But the problem in, what, in my mind and what I um, talked to Tony about was, <clears throat> you know, it's not as much, I feel like, what he might ask from, from us in terms of reports and things, because that's easy and we can do it remotely. But a lot of the audit centers in the treasurer collector's office. And um, my sense was, you know, we, we still need the treasurer collector to help work, you know, to continue to work with us to get the FY20 transactions uh, up to date and, and get everything set for FY20. So we're we're tapping into our time on top of just the regular day to day on top, you know, for her. And I just felt, I, in my opinion, um, having an audit at the same time, and it, it would be overwhelming. So that was my, that was my thinking. Um, he's open. I mean, we're coming into the period of time. Well, first of all, he's slower the way my firm is slower just because of the pandemic. I mean, you're working remotely. Sometimes people can get you things, sometimes they can't. So he has capacity right now. And of course he's looking for, you know, for work. So he, you know, he wants to audit, but that will be true for the next month or so. I, I would say that we, you know, again, depending on when things start to get back to normal and, and you know, you can actually be in town hall. Um, I would think, you know, sometime in May, I mean, it's, it's certainly later than you, than you want it to be from a relevance standpoint, I understand. Um, but that, that's what I would be shooting for. Can I ask a question? It's Diana. Um, I'm curious to know uh, from when you submit um, all of that information, typically in a typical year, mm -hmm. how long it takes for DOR to certify free cash. Mm -hmm. And if you've gotten any information from them about how things could be different because of the pandemic. Right. Um, typically, and I, I will say that it depends what time of year you're submitting. When you're, if you're submitting around the same time everybody else is, which is generally in the fall, in the early fall, um, then then it takes them a little bit longer. Right now, they they also I think are a little bit slower. So I would guess within a week, oh. definitely within two weeks, I would say. Um, okay. And I I have I have been talking to DOR because I also didn't realize until I think yesterday when I was talking to Tony that um, Hatfield, um, the DOR has required that Hatfield provide um, the audited financial statements along with the balance sheet for free cash uh, in the past. That DOR only does that for a very, very, very few number of towns in the Commonwealth. And um, I understand where they, I understand why they were requiring it and, and all that, but um, you know, I realized it yesterday, so I'm thinking, well, that audit's not going to get done, you know, in time to submit. So I reached out to Mary Jane uh, Handy and um, and kind of down the line there. So they're they're willing to waive um, that requirement. They they won't require the audit to be done. Um, they, we, you know, we we have a good relationship with them. They mm -hmm. so they're okay going with the balance sheet, the, what we what we put together for a balance sheet. So well, that's great. Thank and, you. Yeah. So who is, it'll can, save Daryl and I another trip to Worcester. Can <laughs> I, so can I just ask, is Tony from the auditor's office? What, who is Tony? Uh, Tony is is your uh, your uh, uh, independent okay. auditor. It's Roselli and Clark. And oh, it's okay. Tony Roselli. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, yep. And if I could just interrupt for a moment, actually, Tony did reach out to me. He sent me an email today. I haven't had a chance to get back to him, um, but he he is looking at, at making arrangements for the audit, um, mm -hmm. doing it remotely as you had suggested, Pat. Right. I, I just think uh, in, in my mind, uh, I, I would look to Sharon and, and see what her, um, how, how, how crazy busy she 
might mm -hmm. be because he's he's going to be asking for a mm -hmm. lot from her. Mm -hmm. So is Sharon is on the call. Did, did Sharon, did you want to speak to this or? Is on. It looks like she's available by. She's can on hear me? phone. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Sorry. To, to Pat's point, it's but it's got to get done. So we'll do what we need to do. To obviously, we're running short staffed here. Edwina's only in part time at this point. But as always, whatever we've got to do to try to you know facilitate that, we'll do what we can. I I understand. In my mind, I think that's the things that we need to finish 19 and to um, have 20 be current, to my mind, that's a higher priority than, than the audit. Um, so that's how I would suggest, you know, as an approach. I mean, uh, that's, I I'm speaking as like your town, if I were your, I am your town accountant, that's what I'd be telling you. Well, I think in the past, we've been so anxious about the audit because we couldn't do free cash without exactly. It. So exactly. now if that's a little bit different because you're exactly. vouching for us, then we can shift our focus and finish 20 it, if we can still get free cash done. But it, that's just mine. Yep, I was, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, I understand in the past you needed it. If, if they're going to require it uh, for free cash, then you know, you, you've got that imposed timeline. But um, we don't. So I, I mean, I wouldn't, I'm, so, I'm not, you know, I would push it out only as far as we needed to. Um, so, which I, I don't, I think would be met. Before you go, Daryl, the other thing I, sorry, Daryl, I would mention is that we are, I feel comfortable if you guys do need to come here, you know, you know, we'd have to check with the board of health, but you're considered a, an employee of the town. Right. So right. when you guys do feel comfortable, even during all of this, you know, we'd still work at a distance, but at least you could right. be in the building. So that right. is an option from my perspective. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Daryl. No, well, that's okay, Sharon. And we may want to we may want to do that. Um, we'll let's see how long um, you know because we're we're not quite at that point. You know, I want to yeah. figure out nineteen and then um, and then we'll work with twenty. And I'm I'm hoping that by the time we're ready to really dig in and, and reconcile and dig into those FY twenty transactions and talk to you about what reports you're getting and what controls you have internally in your department and all, you know, because I want to understand all that as well. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be past this and we'll be much more open. So what, what will we need to have completed? I mean, if by some chance we have some, some, our annual town meeting in June sometime or late June. I, I, I know that we'll talk about that later, but can you just review with me what needs to be completed before we have, can we, can we have that meeting without having the audit done at that time? Mm -hmm. I know we need free cash and we need 19 taken care of and stuff right. like that, but right. anyway. That wouldn't it wouldn't hold up your um, your town meeting at all. I mean, I, other than having the free, you know, d depending on how your budget is structured and, and what um, you're anticipating or hoping to have in free cash and use in free cash, you know, that would be the that would be the factor. Okay. Um, when we submit the balance sheet, we will at that point because everything will be as nailed down as we feel we can make it. Um, we will have an estimate um, at at that point. Um, yeah. So we can uh, even to just give you a ballpark, you know, if it's, uh, you know, less than what you had been anticipating, then we'll, we would try to give you as much of a heads up on that. Um, to be honest with you, the last few years, um, we've learned to anticipate nothing because of all the troubles we've okay. had. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's 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 a good plan. As a conservative accountant, that's that, I will <coughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so I think I think that was that's it for 19 for where we are in 19. I think and you know I'm happy to answer any uh, questions on 19 and, and I can give you a, a brief update on where we are in FY20. FY20 okay. is going. Thanks, Pat. No, I, I was just going to say, um, do, do Diana or Ed have any questions? And then we'll ask if the um, anybody on the finance committee has any questions just regarding 2019. Mm -hmm. I do not. Okay. Um, 
Daryl or Betsy or anybody else from the Finance Committee or, or Ed, if, if anybody has anything regarding 2019, please uh, please let Pat know and then we'll we'll move on to the 2020 discussion. Okay. I'm good. Oh, cool. All right. I'll okay. Set. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, um, FY20, and this won't uh, take too long. The um, vendor warrants um, have been entered up to date, uh, and, and as you know, Diane, you have Diane Laverty um, entering those, and we've been processing the warrants. The payroll warrants. Um, you know, part of part of what we want to try to accomplish in um, Hatfield is, <clears throat> you know, you haven't you have several different kind of systems that are trying to talk to each other. So you've got the school department that's on Tyler software and has its own set of account numbers. And then you have, um, I think the thing with the payroll, Sharon, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you're you using um, Tyler for that, right? Right. So, so you're using Tyler for payroll and that has um, yet a, another set of account numbers. So you've got the school and you've got Tyler payroll, and then you have the general ledger. So you've got three different sets of account numbers all that need to talk to each other. So what we, our, you know, absolute intention during FY20 or by the end of FY20 is to, to come up with some automated way to get these to talk to each other. I mean, just, you know, from a technical standpoint, it, it should be a fairly simple crosswalk, but, um, but there, I know there's more to it than that. So we're, we're just trying to figure out how do we take this data without re-keying it in, you know, and, that, and that's where I think a lot of sometimes the errors come from, particularly between the school and the town, um, because that information has to be regurgitated basically to get it into the town's general ledger. And that's just, it's just prone to error. You know, it's, that's just human. So, um, so we're, as we're, so part of the reason I'm saying all this is the payroll warrants, <coughs> excuse me, the payroll warrants need to be summarized in, in a way that will let us then post them to the general ledger. So that is in process. So as a result, unfortunately, there are no payroll, the payroll warrants, the payroll warrants have all been processed, they've been approved, people have been paid, but it um, is not reflected in the general ledger right now, like in the expenses right now, which pretty much makes your budget versus actual, you know, meaningless. Um, so, you know, we recognize this and we're, and we're, we're trying, you know, we're trying to get them done. Um, as fast as we can. Um, and I, and we have a process in place now and we have a staff person who's uh, working on it. So again, I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks, assuming um, the staff person can can get on them right away. I'm hoping with, we're hoping within another um, couple of weeks that we'll have all the payroll warrants in there. Because once you do the summarization and then you do the entry, that doesn't take any time at all. So, you know, we can do months of payroll uh, warrant posting uh, quickly as soon as we get the summary. So is, is, is part of the the general ledger or whatever that's is that's Vadar, right? Am I correct? Yes. And then at some point is it gonna make sense to make all of the, right. them one system? Yeah. Well, you know what or am I asking too much? No, at what the really frustrating part is, you know, the town was on Tyler. Um, you know, so that was unfortunate. Um, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with the Vadar system, but it makes no sense to have two Tyler systems in a Vadar. Um, so I thought switching to Vadar was supposed to make us more efficient. I would have the opposite effect. I mean, you by just by virtue of having separate or uh, different um, systems, software, um, they there's going there would have to be a bridge for those to talk to each other um when when it's the same system then it, it typically is automatically integrated um so you know i i, I know <clears throat> you know bay state when when they do um anyone's accounting uh they that was part of their um package was that the town would convert you know to to vader and vader is i mean it's a perfectly good system it's not like there's anything wrong with the system it's just um, the communication between them, the other modules that need, they all need to talk to each other. So we're, we're trying, we're at this point, we're just going to try to create a bridge between them. Um, and uh, to answer your, your question, yes, it would make sense for all, all three to be on the same, Tyler. 
So that's going to be something that the the select board and the finance committee, along with share, you know, the, the collector treasurer's office, all all of us and, and yourselves included, Pat, to yep. you know. Once the dust settles a little bit, like you said, for next year, we'll, we're going to have to figure out what makes sense. Right. To, right. to, right. to you know, once and for all. <laughs> exactly. We hope exactly. Um, to, to, to make everyone's lives ultimately easier and, right. and right. more importantly, more efficient and less errors. That That's the goal of all of this because yeah. um, everybody's spending, and, and it's necessary right now, but everybody's spending too much time going back and trying to find things, right? So right. let's find them, let's fix them, and then let's get a system in there that all interfaces with one another and be done with this once be done with this once and for all. That that right. would be my recommendation to to my colleagues and, and the finance committee. I, I guess I was under the impression when Vader was presented to us as a possibility that that's the direction we were heading, that it was going to make things more efficient. So. I'm oh, I'm this is Sharon. Can you hear me? Yes. So from the collector's point of view, Vadar has sped up the process. Right. If we have converted all of the collector side, which we used a DOS-based program before in point to do that. And so, you know, I'm the one who's on the fence all the time about Vadar not. And from the collector's perspective, it's working fabulous. Yeah. You guys are now upload getting all of my receipts from the collector's <laughs> office and not having to book them. Right. Right. I'm not defending either one, but we already now have jumped in with Vadar for all right. of our collecting things for water, sewer, real estate, personal property. So Tyler does not give that as an option, just so everyone's clear. So if we go back to Tyler for the school and for the collecting, uh, for the treasurer's point of view, uh, for payroll purposes, there's no option there for what you would do as a collector. No, well, I, I think that's, Tyler thank you, has. Sharon, I, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, Pat, I mean, yes, Munis, right? We Tyler <laughs> Munis has. I know it's crazy expensive. We can't um, afford that. So no, it's crazy. Well, I looked into that beforehand. So if yeah. we make that choice mm -hmm. back to go to Tyler yeah. and that solution, yeah. Yeah. there's yeah. no, there's a gap there. Of what would we then do for collecting? Right, right. And, and and we we will collectively take care of this once and for all after we get through um, straightening out 19 and 20 because. And there's a long history, and Daryl and I and and Marley, you know, we yep. it, we don't need to rehash it here, yep. but we yep. but we need to do our best to come up with one system, or if we're going to have two, they've got to there's got to be a way of interfacing exactly. so that the the nonsense stops once and right. for all. In right. this day and age, uh, whatever. So yep. go ahead. Yep. <laughs> I digress. No, I, I I couldn't agree more. And and that our goal um is to by the end of 20 to if, it, if it's not completely implemented, to at least have a, a, a mechanism um, that, you know, reduces to the absolute minimum, hopefully none, um, the rekeying or re-entering or, re or, or any of that. There's got to be a way to bridge these systems. And that, and that, was our, that is the way we're approaching it. We're approaching it like the town is going to stay with Vedar for GL and collections, and, and the others are going to stay with what they have, Tyler and, uh, for uh, payroll and for school. And I, I mean, I know we can get this to, to work and talk to each other. We just, we just got to figure it out. Yeah, um, I would but agree. But then there's, there's a lot of other processes that also need to happen in there, you know, um, and it has to do with, in, in my mind, with the communication and uh, transfer of data between the accountant, the treasurer, the collector, and the assessor. If those four, you know, functions um, can talk to each other and exchange information in a, in a comparative way, um, that's what's needed, you know, and then making sure within the collector's office that um, uh, your controls make sense and that you're, you're, you are comfortable reconciling within your department, you know, like that, you know, you have um, a lot of times collectors will keep a control book, but they call it control book. So, you know, that's where you write the, the total commitment for the, you know, year and the total abatements and all that. And then you reconcile that to the actual detailed balance due. And, you know, there's things like that that I just want to make sure I understand. So our goal is to get the town to that point. I mean, I can tell you, Lori and I have put in a lot of time and we are both really just, we're going to do this. We are going to get to the other side of this and have it be, have it work. And because I can, uh, we can see it, we can get there. It just, and honestly, I'm thinking two to three years before you're at a point where it's really running like smoothly and, you know, it just, 
it just flows because that's that's what should happen. Um, so we're not we're not there yet, but as we're going through this process, we're we're you know we've talked to our IT guy about okay, how do we? Is there some way we can move it, get this data from here to here? And how, how do we do it? Ask a question. My my question is, my question is, are other towns experiencing the same thing with multiple platforms trying to talk to each other? Or is there is there a platform in place, a software program that does everything, or is there not? Yeah, there is, um, uh, and and it, it is not typical to have a community that has several different uh, platforms the way you do, or you have two. I mean, you have Vador and Tyler, basically. Um, that's that's unusual, uh, in my experience. Um, you know, Tyler slash Munis um, is. I mean, I, I like it from an accounting standpoint. I think it does from a general ledger standpoint and all that. Um, it's just the most expensive when you get all modules. So, you know, generally the larger communities um, have that. Um, Vadar does. I mean, you have the collections and you have um, the general ledger. So, that you know, they have that. They're not as good on this, I, I don't think, on the for the school's purposes, because, you know, the school has a whole other level of reporting requirements that um, uh, is that is driven actually by their chart of accounts and um, so forth. So there there's other um, elements to that that uh, Vadar doesn't. Uh, I don't I don't know that Vadar really accommodates that. Um, but no, it's it's unusual. Typically, when a town selects a software, everybody it's a it's a joint decision and everybody goes with that one provider. Um, Thanks, Pam. Sure. Um, I can, can I can continue. There's only a couple of other things with that. Sure. No, 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 yeah, absolutely. The, um, on the receipt side, um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> on the receipt side, uh, the receipts have actually been entered through only through October. Um, we're uh, working with, you know, the way the way the system works, the treasurer is the one receiving the money and um, they create uh, postings, batches to be posted. And then they do what they need to do on their end to kind of push it over to the accountant side so that the accountant then sees it, can verify it and post it. So um, I, and it's that process that we, we I, don't, I don't know that we understood completely what needed to happen. Um, so, uh, because, you know, Sharon would be saying, I posted, I have, I, I posted all those, I did those batches. Um, and we're looking at our screen and we're saying, but we don't see any. So, you know, it took a little while to just sort of figure that out. Um, so that, uh, so we got that, we have that down, but, um, again, it, it, it's kind of this balancing act between spending time on 19 versus 20. So that, um, but I, you know, one, again, once we kind of pass the 19, um, off and we're done with it. Um, that won't take long, I don't think, to do the receipts. I mean, we have to verify them, but we have we have hands that can help us do that. So, and then once um, everything is in FY20 and up to date, we have all the payroll warrants, all the receipts, and whatnot. Um, then we'll we'll start to reconcile uh, cash and receivables, and we'll um, be reaching out to um, the larger departments, certainly the school, um, highway. I would imagine. Um, I don't know if police might have some grants, but you know, we'd want to try to verify what's in the general ledger for balances before the end of June so that, you know, we don't get to June and say, you know, what do you mean we're off $200,000, you know, be easier to find that and, or start looking for it in May. So, um, so that's our, that's our plan for that. Um, and that's where we are. So FY20 is not, you know, not, in, not in great shape. But we have all the data. We have a process. I don't think it's going to take long once we get 19 um, done. Not not too long. So that's where that's that's where we stand. Thank you very much, Beth. That's great. Okay. I appreciate it. Yes, that. thank you. Yeah, appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Did uh, any did Diana or Ed or anybody from the finance committee have any other questions of Pat at this point? Or Sharon? I don't. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Finance committee folks, anybody have a particular question? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No. So, Pat, just 
I'm not going to summarize everything you just said, but the, the quick one is, um, so hopefully by the end of next week, uh, 2019 is going to be a wrap. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All yes. Right. That's awesome. Thank yeah, you. I know. Yay. Yeah. yeah. We'll all be very happy. <laughs> yes. And, and thank you again for everybody's efforts uh, on the school yes. side of the house and, and with you folks as far as that school choice monies go and figuring out where the discrepancies were and resolving that. So that's a. Uh, that's very good to hear. So thank you very much. Yes. And um, thank you to Sharon and Marlene for the work they're doing yeah, coordinating. Absolutely. All of this as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pat, was there anything you had that you needed from us while you have us all collected here? Um, no, I don't think so. I, okay. I think I'm, we're all set. We're just chugging along. Okay. okay. Thanks awesome. very much, Pat. Really appreciate okay. your time. Okay. Yeah. Thank well, you. Thank yeah. you all very much. Thank all you. Right. Have a good right. evening. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you. Bye, -bye. Good Bye. To you. Bye. All right, Brian, where do you want to go from here? Well, are we going to talk about the um, town meeting warrants and articles, or did you have, do well, you want to talk yeah, about budgets? Or meetings, kind of Twitter, but... Good place right. to start. Like, okay. what do we, what, what do you, right. what is the Board of Selectmen thinking about town meeting? Like, mm -hmm. when? So let, let's start with, um, if I could, let's start with what we think is going to be um, the election because we already did this with Lydia Darrow at our last meeting. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, so we're looking at keep at this point in time, we're looking at keeping the, uh, the election, and, you know, for articles, et cetera, um, if, if anything needs to be on the ballot uh, for, for June, Tuesday, June 23rd. Because we have not, Lydia has not been given, and if Lydia is still on, she can correct me if I'm wrong. We have not been given any sort of guidance that uh, the election and, and those types of things can be beyond June 30th at this point. That's, okay. that's correct. Okay. So having said that, and I, I haven't spoken to Joe, the town moderator, um, since since last week, but ideally, I think... Joe's thought, and if Joe's still on, he certainly um, correct me if I'm wrong or add anything to it. I think we were uh, tentatively looking to probably have town meeting at this point. Uh, who knows what the next few weeks have in store for us with, um, you know, what's going on uh, at the week before, which would probably be June 16th. And, and I, Brian, and I, I just think, want to add that I, I... Pardon? Ahead, and I think, part of, I think what we were looking at, Daryl, to make a long story short, is we were probably looking at if we had to have somewhat of a uh, smaller, I don't know what the right word to use is, uh, a, a, a shorter town meeting, it would be to take up budget articles that really needed to be done by the end of June because you need them for July 1st to kick off the next uh, budget cycle. <laughs> Okay, so, well, I so know what so you were going to do like Southwick and be in the parking lot and have everybody six feet in, in, in difference. So. I, I, well, I think that we're, uh, again, I don't mean to speak for the town moderator, but I, I, I think we're, we're at this point, because it's only the middle of April, we're planning on having the town meeting at some point in June at this point, and it would be to take up the, the heavy hitter articles, for lack of a better term, that need to be done to get us rolling into July 1st. And then if there's anything else, um, you know, we would maybe schedule another meeting in the uh, town meeting in the fall. Uh, pers personally, and this is just Brian's opinion, I think it's a little, right now, I think it's a little soon to know exactly when we're gonna do it, but we're planning for the middle of June too. Yeah. Yeah, okay. More, kind of a more to follow thing, but um, Joe, if you're on and you wanna say anything, feel free. Uh, but I think I, pretty much reiterated what what joe and i had spoken about last week and um i know an email came out a little earlier i haven't read the whole thing that just kind of a an idea and a suggestion and yes uh like a uh, similar to a southwick type thing and we're just more to follow like mm -hmm. you know right yeah, and, and part part of the oh sorry joe was that Good, you? no it's okay i i am here and and i have chatted with brian a little bit about it um Southwick chose to do outside to get more people to come into the meeting. Um, 
feeling safer being outside. They did it in the parking lot of the school because all of the, the parking spaces are, are pretty much six feet apart. It gave people a little more confidence. They used the uh, emergency planning and the Board of Health to give some opinions and the fire department and police. Um, it also was to try and get slim down the articles to what is the bare minimum we need to operate as a town because people are not going to stand outside all that long into the evening. We, we do have the lights on at the, at the high school as well. That's possible. But you really need enough people there to, to, to reach a quorum. But you also, you really want to just get the basics of the town going. And we've always said, you know, let's have special town meetings when there's an emergency. Well, this is an emergency. And we can really kick some things out into, say, September if, if need be. Once the article is, once the article is signed, once the, uh, the articles, the warrant is signed off and set by the date that the Board of Selectmen want, the law says that the moderator and the town clerk can kick it out a month at a time once the warrant is certified. Um, so we do have some time. Once you get past June 30th, though, then you've got to start looking at the Finance Committee and approving a 112th budget each month from then on. So that's, that's the extreme. Okay. Well, and, and the reason I was asking is, you know, if, if we're tentatively planning the middle of June, then that gives us a rough idea when we need to be meeting to put budgets together to kind of plan for it, at least our part. Of it. Can, sorry, can I make a suggestion just about that general format? That it seems like it might be a good idea to um, put everything on the warrant articles that you might possibly need to do mm -hmm. since they have to be posted in advance. And yeah. then immediately before you could kind of decide whether to how much to slim down and what to slim down, because it may turn out that sometime in June, July is actually your best opportunity to get this meeting in. Mm. That fall could conceivably be worse um, and you'd be unable to do it in September or October. Mm -hmm. um, that plan, that, Sean, that plan gives us the most flexibility. That idea, I like that idea. Yeah, you can always cut them, you can always table them or whatever, right. Right? you know, but if we don't have them on there, you can't take them up. And if we find out in June that, right. you know, I, I just, if you follow sort of the pattern of the way some of these other things have taken place historically, fall has not been particularly good. So. And Sean, I just want to add that um, the, the warrant currently is no different um, than it, it normally is right now, unless I'm advised to do something different. But okay. it, you know, it has all the articles um, to the best of my knowledge on there. Okay. And, and if I can, if I can add in there, you know, there's some things that we can do like, like uh, in, in the proposals Marlene sent to me, and I know this isn't a locked in articles, but like the, the first three, the two, three, and four, you can combine those into one vote for the sake of expediency with people this time only, uh, because they're just state revenue sharing state monies that we accept. Yeah, but you've got some others, like Sean said, if you put the whole thing together, we can do like we've done before and uh, last time. And we can take many of those articles in a collective group and say, let's table them for the future mm -hmm. and let's table them for the next special meeting if we can, because we're not going to we can't expect people to sit outside for four hours in the evening on a on a day which we also have to maybe have a rain date because let's say we have it on a tuesday and it rains we might have to do push it to that saturday well if that's a question joe have we considered having it on a saturday well during the day if you pick a tuesday and you let people know there's a rain date for a saturday you've actually posted two potential days in there in case it rained um if if this whole thing miraculously lifted and we can have it inside but i don't know if that'll be possible. So if we just post it to be held at Smith Academy, we could hold it outside or potentially inside because it's 
it's posted as at Smith Academy. Mm -hmm. um, and then if, if look, if everything looked beautiful in, and we're inside and we can do the whole town meeting, we'll do that. But if it looks very dicey and people are feeling very skittish, we can hold it outside and have a very slim down bunch of articles that are the very basic to keep our town going. Again, the most flexibility um, that affords yeah. us the most flexibility. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Sean. So, so Daryl, did that answer your question as far as the dates go, or at least give you an idea? Yeah, and, so and you're right, we, we can start going backwards now to see about working right. on budgets. I mean, I, I, I guess at some point, we, and we're going to have to, and you know, relook at budgets um, are, uh, from everybody. Um, we had been planning on meeting with all departments. We were kind of waiting for Melance and Heath to get done now. Um, and so it's gonna be a little bit difficult. Are we gonna do it this way? I, I guess we have to do it, do it this way, but we should probably start scheduling meetings in the next you know at least in the next couple next week and next next two weeks uh to start going over everybody's budget and and maybe getting an idea of what kind of what we're going to need for money to make 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 everything flow this year what do you think sean i i just think we i i think it's difficult and i think that no matter what we sort of perceive the revenue to be, right? that we need to consider the idea that it could turn out to be substantially less. Yeah. You know, that we may not actually be able to collect all the revenue. Um, that's a really good point, yeah. Yeah. That, that's my concern, you know, like is that you, you get your numbers and we can project and predict it but then what happens when you don't collect it? Yeah. Right. And, and that just seems like a possibility with so many people being unemployed. I mean, I mean, a lot of people in Hatfield are older, obviously, and their income maybe not doesn't grow as much, but it's also more stable, potentially. But I, right. I can see that collections could be a problem, like even on excise and... Right. Water, sewer. Right. All that well, stuff. And, and I just wrote my check. Just you'll be happy to know. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if I, I was so that, happy to pay my water bill, it wasn't funny. But if I can, can add I, in there, I, you know, if I can add in there, the state's not going to be, I'll say, as generous as they have been. State and federal revenue sharing are going to be very, very stressed as the year goes on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if anybody thinks it's not, their heads in the sand because. You know, and this is that when you guys got to talk to departments, they're going to have to go as bare bones as possible, and 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 uh, and I'm sure they know it. Right. Yeah. If John Robert is is still on, can John? Would you be willing to just talk a little bit about what the effect of not having kids in school has done to your the current budget that you're working on now, and how that's all working and I hate to say it, but there's probably some savings in heating buildings and lighting, but I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's a lot. That's a lot, Daryl. Um, Sorry. No, no, that's fine. Only and to your really, comfort level. Yeah, and yeah, fiscal year 20 right now, there's a lot of changes going on, but I want to just say that um, we are not closed in the sense that we are not working. All of our teachers are still working. We're doing remote remote learning, our paraprofessionals are still engaged and we are engaged every day with students. With that said, there are some savings we're looking at in some of our contracted services. And now that we know that school is gonna be closed, now is a much better chance for Riley and I to kind of sit down and look at what purchase orders we can void, what contracts we no longer have to really, you know, maintain. Um, and uh, we are right now, waiting to hear back from the bus company 
um, and we are engaging in a memorandum of understanding around amending that contract. Uh, we have been encouraged, strongly encouraged by the Department of Education and by the Department of Revenue to uh, pay a portion of our bus contracts. The concern across the state is that if everybody went ahead and just didn't pay the bus companies, uh, that some of those companies would actually go out of business. Um, and part of the expense of the bus company is beyond just the gas that they spend. Um, there's other, you know, there's leases on buses and things like that that still have to be maintained, so forth. So there will be some savings in the buses. I'm, I'm certain of that. And we'll have a better understanding, hopefully, by Thursday school committee meeting where that's going to be. So, there, so the other issue, though, is that there are some revolving accounts that we rely on. Uh, preschool tuition accounts, which pay towards some salary. Uh, and we, now that we know that school is going to be closed, we are going to be uh, refunding some tuition, preschool mm -hmm. tuition, as well as not receiving some tuition for about three months, as well as our lunch revolving accounts as well. So we did lay off most of our lunch staff. We still are looking at projected deficits in both of those revolving accounts. So it's hard to say if we're going to have like a lot of savings this year at 20. My guess is we may have a little bit of savings. I'll have a better idea within a week or so. Um, this is Bethany Ryder. Wouldn't there be savings in the athletic department? There may be some savings, yes, because we're not running spring sports, but also um, we are also going to be refunding some um, some of the um, user fees as well for the spring right. sports. So yep. we'll have a better understanding of where we are with that. But there, you know, there may be a little bit of savings in that revolving account. Yeah, that, that, that's a and that's not a revolving account that I'm at all concerned about running a deficit. No. Right. And the transportation costs for special education should also go down. Well, some special ed schools though aren't necessarily all closed. No, they don't but, have to but, close. But the transportation is definitely a savings because uh, we, we do not have contracts for we, we pay as we go for special ed transportation. And and that that money is definitely that's going to be a savings there, as well as subs. We're saving a lot of money in subs right now, too. Right. So, you know, and what I what my goal is to do is to try and look at trying to save as much school choice money as I can and spend regular money right now right. and be able to put the savings in school choice that can be applied towards fiscal year 21 because that's an account that would fall over into the next fiscal year and right. help uh with the budgeting so that's our goal hopefully we can maybe i, I don't want to say numbers right now because it's too early but that's, that's, if we can yeah if we can put away some school choice savings for fiscal year 20. The one thing that i do want to say though is when we estimate our fiscal year our revenue for fiscal year 20 school choice, um, we factor in getting reimbursed for special education. Our special education reimbursement for fiscal year 20 school choice will be less than we projected because we are going to be reporting uh, the special ed services under the remote learning plan, which is going to be slightly less than what it would be if the kids were in school. Um, so that's going to be a little bit less reimbursement for special ed school choice. It's kind of complicated, but it's going to be a little bit less. I'll know more after I submit that later this week. So it's, it's, it's a pretty complicated situation. Um, we may also get a little bit of savings in some of these grants too, because, um, you know, and, and those grants we, we can uh, look to see, uh, maybe we can use some of that. One concern I have going into fiscal year 21 though, is the fact that, um, we are probably going to have to spend more money this summer than we would traditionally um, because of the concern about regression. Uh, I'm not sure if, if we're even allowed to be in the schools in July and August. I'm hoping we will. But summer may be a little bit more than what we had originally projected. So fiscal year 21 has me concerned. Um, as Joe was saying, um, I don't know the effects on state aid, Chapter 70. Uh, Traditionally, Chapter 70 has always been held harmless in situations like this, but this is an unprecedented situation. So um, we will see what happens with uh, with Chapter 70 um, for next year. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on right now, with, <laughs> as you can imagine. Uh, there is some federal monies coming, federal stimulus money that will be. We look. We, we were told to expect that around July 1st. Uh, I think it's about 200. 
$20 million going into Massachusetts under this CARE um, Act. And that money, 90% of it will be going to school districts based on the Title I appropriations. So uh, that'll be a little bit of money that will be able to be used. And they're, pretty, they're being pretty uh, open on how schools can use it. I think it'll be able to uh, actually look at perhaps um, augmenting some of our uh, services that we need to provide perhaps this summer with some of that money and uh, also be able to use it to uh, kind of get our schools ready to reopen. So uh, I'm looking for, you know, that's going to be one bright thing that is going to be coming our way. Does John, that help? Yeah, that does. Do you think, what's a reasonable time for us to ask? I mean, we probably got it. We, 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 we need to sit down with you and whoever from the school committee and talk about your 21 budget yes. is, yeah. Two weeks from now, three weeks from now, give me a reasonable expectation that, you know, I mean, your the school budget is such a big part of the town budget that we, right. we really need to get a handle on your budget so we know what to do with the other budgets. So, yeah, and I know you ha you have our preliminary figures, and it should be a little bit less than what when we met before because we had made a few reductions. Uh, I'm gonna be we have a school committee meeting Thursday night. Um, and I'll have a better sense, but I, I would say probably we could probably look at maybe two weeks, two, okay. two to three weeks. I would say two weeks at least, uh, but then we'll have a better idea of where we are financially. I, I, one week wouldn't be enough. So at least minimum two weeks, preferably three weeks, or should, we should be in much better shape. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, maybe, maybe that second week of May, John. In that vicinity, somewhere in there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll, probably. Yeah, and, yeah. and if you give us a day, we'll, we'll we'll back into it. We'll do what we need to do, um, you know, to to get there. Um, or or if you guys finish it sooner, let us know, and we'll you know we can work that way too. You know, we just because we we want you to have time to to go through it with the school committee and and everybody on your end. Well, the uh, other thing, I, what I want to add to is, is is if we do reach the point where you know things are we get the message that things are, are really dire and so forth and we're going to need to start getting things ready on our end too and um you know whether we're looking at you know giving people notices i hate to say that but the reality of it is is that right you know we may have to do that and we have a time frame i believe it's june 15th um is the deadline for us to notify staff but um you know, I, I'm I, the one thing I'd want to say is I'll be honest with you. That there's not a lot of fat in our school budget, right. um, but we are going to take a, a first, second, third look as much as possible. The other thing that's out there I just want to add is uh, the um, the state changed the rules for uh, vocational education. They expanded the uh, deadline for enrollment at Smith Vogue to May 1st. Um, I have those preliminary numbers, uh, which I've given to Marlene, and you have those, but um, you know, I don't anticipate anybody else applying, but just be aware that May 1st is the uh, deadline for, for Smith Vogue now. Okay. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah thanks. John. Not exactly the way to ease into retirement, John. <laughs> <laughs> So the rest of the finance committee and, and we, select you, board. You might as well keep working, John. There's nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good with my plans here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, selectmen and finance committee, should we make tentatively set a date for two to three weeks from now to start going over budgets? Yes. Well, what do we want to do, Daryl? I guess, like, what do, do I guess, do we want to try to set like a philosophy first or do we want to go over budgets first? Well, we probably should have a philosophy. I mean, we do assume that revenues in the town are going to be down or at least collections are going to be down. We, we, we assume that the state money is probably going to be down yes and so you know i can't imagine you know 
I don't know what else we can tell people because we don't know how much they're going to be down. No, There's I know. no way I... that any of this will be a surprise to any department heads. No. <laughs> you know, but do we, do we, is, is level from last year our starting point or, you know. What, yeah, I what... think that's the kind of thing we have to think about. Like, right. And, and I mean, I, I'd like to hear too from the school at some point, I'm, I'm very concerned about given how we run that as a, as a business, essentially, right. in, as starting a cascade effect in the school system where our cuts uh, cost us so much in school choice revenue that then we're forced to cut more that costs us more school choice revenue and so right. on and so forth yeah, until we hit bottom. Ends. That that's my that I that's a big concern. I mean, we're essentially running that like a business in a way. And so, what you're saying, Sean, is that we might want to leave the school budget alone because it'll fold on itself in a way that other town departments will not. Well, I think we want to at least look at what can we get away with without making that happen. Yes, I don't want that to happen because. It, we're depending on it for revenue now. It's not just a school anymore. You know, no, it's like right. And if we start, if if the school has to start cut cutting staff and whatnot, then it's going to just, you know, yeah, there'll be a cascade it, effect. It's also a time where, I mean, I I'd like to know too, like what's what's our capacity, what's our safe capacity to serve students in the school because. It might be a time when other schools do cut staff and do cut, so you have to cut significantly and people are looking to go somewhere else potentially. Mm -hmm. So do we have capacity for that mm -hmm. right. in a virtual or non-virtual environment, I guess? Right. I don't know. And if, if I can jump in and just make a suggestion back when I, I'm just saying from experience back when I was on finance many years ago, many years ago, uh, we went through a very tough economic time as well and all we did is put out to department heads and said look and 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 they knew the writing on the wall they knew what we were facing and we just said look what would your budget look like if it had to be level funded what if it had to be cut by five and what if it had to be cut by eight or ten percent please tell us what we're looking at because we don't want to go that way but what would you suggest you need to do in that situation so at least they give you some kind of a menu as ugly as it looked like to take a look at as a finance committee, even though you hope to never, ever have to exercise that. Just right. a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we've tried to do that. Obviously not quite, we've never had to do it at that scale, but you know, I think that's the kind of thing we might wanna do. Well, it's easy for you guys to guess what they should cut, but if they tell you in a very emergency situation, what would right. they do? Now, you don't have to make that public. You can just absorb it and see, my God, this is what, what it would look like right. if we had to. But at least you know and they know what they put together. Yeah, well, I, 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 I like all that. And so do we, do we go back to the departments, as Joe's suggesting, and request them to submit a level-funded maybe a 2% and a 5% less, you know, reduced budget and turn turn that in. You think that's enough? Finance committee, do you think that's enough? I would suggest that you go all the way up to 10%, to be honest with you. I, I mean, okay. it would be good to have it, you know, and, and it would put people on notice as how bad this could get. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think if if we're going to do that, that we probably should have an alternate conversation as well, which is, is that in fact a strategy that we would even pursue? Would exactly. be to cut everybody ten percent, or would we just decide that there are certain things we're no longer going to do? Exactly. Right, but if, yeah, you know, I, I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how long this thing's going to go on or what's going to happen, but there's some things in town that are currently closed. Right. And we might just leave it that way. Are we going to keep funding things that are, if we, if the alternative option is to cut everybody 10%, mm -hmm. you know, like. 
Sean. We might just choose wholesale. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Right. Can I just pipe in? I mean, it seems to me, you know, we usually try to be pretty fair um, with decreases and increases and all of that. But I think under these circumstances, I think it needs to be presented that, you know, decisions are going to have to be made that, that might not be as level among departments. Um, you know, it's really going to be a matter of establishing priorities with, you know, whether it be, I mean, obviously schools, public safety, you know, what those services may have to be prioritized in a way they never have been before. Well, right. and that's why when you ask people something as deep as as much as 10 percent, the finance committee gets to see how brutal on any given department that would or could right. be. And that's right. where John comes in saying, you know, we've got to draw a line in the sand and we can't do that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I go back to thinking, I still think we asked for a level two, five, ten percent. I don't think that's unreasonable to at least ask for. Give give departments, give them three weeks and to turn it in and then let's get together and see what it see what it looks like. Daryl, yeah. can I just get some clarification? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you're asking for level fiscal year 20, level funded? Yes. No, then, 21. 21. No. no, no, you're asking start with the fiscal year 20 and assume a 0% increase? Yeah. In local? Yes. Oh. Assume a 0, 2%, 5%, 5 and a 10%. Okay. And if I reach a point where I say that, well, never mind. We'll just. So you want to? Right. You want how much of a figure, or you want specific cuts? Well, we I think what we would need, John, is a narrative, at least a narrative, like statement, right. and like an impact yeah. statement. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because like, yeah. yeah, like for like a zero would be about a three hundred seventy-two thousand dollar cut would be level funded, right? From what we projected. Okay. Right. And, and all the way down get, to. When we get to like a two to five percent kind of thing, ten percent, whatever, it would be helpful to, for someone to say this would mean basically we'd have to lay off, you know. We'd have to shut. Yeah, I got you. Okay, thank you. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll relay that to the school committee tomorrow morning. Right. We'll to the chair. Yeah. Sorry about that, but I I, I think it's the best way to approach it. Well, I mean, I agree. I think we've got to see it. Right, we, yeah. we 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 just have to see the numbers and um, right, and then and then kind of take it from there when we meet. And and this might be this might be a year, depending on what happens with free cash, that we may elect to use some free cash to run some budget. I know we've stayed away from that, but these are unprecedented times, and we'll, well just see yeah. what we need to do. Yeah, it's really raining. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I was going well, to mention mean that, laugh, but yeah, it's pouring out. Right. Yeah. Um, Daryl, I think that I think, and Brian just mentioned it, but I think it's important to see the numbers. But even if it's a paragraph or whatever, I think it's important, especially for independently elected groups like the school committee or any other independently elected body, to express something in the terms of intent. You know, like not just to say, well, this would mean a fifty thousand dollar cut because I can do that math and figure I was it out. Say, we we can do that, but yeah, right. What, what's it what mean? The hell, what would you do? Right. You know, like well, how? And and that doesn't mean you're not like locked into it, and this is the only choice. But like, give me an idea how how you would right. process that. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. I. What's like, your thinking? Like, like like John said, a narrative. Right. You know, 10% would mean we would have in the police department may mean that we get rid of we have to get rid of two two full-time people to to hit that right. number or whatever. Right. I get these all the time at work impact statements. If we were going to cut, you know, 3 million dollars out of your budget, what would it what would it do? Right. Mm -hmm. So is so are we are we going to ask that Marlene send something out yes. to all the departments and say yeah. we're looking at a zero, two, five, and ten? What? Yes. And, okay. What's the deadline for uh, submitting that information? You thought two or three weeks? 
Well, I'm looking at my calendar right now. And if we, if they, do you think they can get it to us by the week of the 15th, by the 15th of May and we meet the following week? Sure. Sure. So maybe we could tentatively plan the meet on the 19th? That's fine with me. Yeah. Marlene, yeah. I, I, I would also maybe suggest that we find out from anybody if there's any sort of significant big ticket items that we can't get out of. Right. Well, I, I will let you know today that I received, um, I had increased the uh, property and general liability insurance budget anyway, but I received a written notification today of the rate increase for the next fiscal year is 11.1%. Oh my God. Yes. So that's 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 workers comp uh, property and, and general liability. Where is that coming from, Marlene? Most workers comp or the others? Uh, the big increase is on the workers comp. Yeah, so that that relates to our experience in some way. That you, yeah, our uh, experience. Yeah. The other things probably don't as much, you know, like property insurance can be based yeah, on a whole ton of things that you don't know about, you know, what is the reinsurance cost and stuff, yeah. but workers comp. How are we purchasing that? Do we, it's not rebid every year. Are we going through some type of, I mean, we're going, is it, am I, is it um, Maya? Maya? Yes, yeah. it is with Maya. Okay. Can we rebid it? We can. We could. I mean, work, workers comp, we're not going to gain anything, but. Nope. But, but maybe we need to look at making some cuts on the other, other portion of our insurance. How many, yeah. vehicles, how I mean, many vehicles do we have? Do we need to get rid of some vehicles that we're insuring? Is that going to save us some money? Well, I can get that list. I don't have it readily available. I think just in general, it might be worth looking at the, uh, you know, the insurance coverage as a whole. Yeah. I think those things though, Daryl, are things that we have to like look at in the budget as, as part of the budgets as well. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, like. I, I agree. Just as an example, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but I'm saying as an example, like if you have to cut the police department X percent and we have to lay off some people, do we need another, do we need the third cruiser? Right. Right. for somebody who doesn't exist, you know, like, or, and I'm sure there's innumerable things like that, you know, like, the, right. If you do one thing, then you might as well do another because you don't need it anymore. Right. Right. Whatever that is. Yeah. No, I agree. So we're, were we okay with the date of the, of May 19th to meet again? I'm yeah. good with that. Of course, we're never going anywhere. We're always here. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of free time, Daryl. We can. Yeah. And, 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 and should we, for that meeting, do we just want to meet with us or do we want to, do we want to bring in maybe the school Marlene and her budget and Phil and her budget take those are generally kind of the three biggest budgets that we have. Do we want want to bring them in for discussion? I think I'd like to see the budgets and have the conversation with the two boards. Okay. Because that way we'll have everything in front of us, Daryl. And you know, no, um, I, I mean that's just my opinion. I don't know how everybody else feels. Well, that's why we, I asked the question. Well, yeah. we can always follow it up with another meeting to, to right. do that too, to bring in other people and look at more detail. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so we, we let's let's do that. And how's that going to work, Marlene? Are we going to be able to pick up packets so we can look at? Yeah these budgets or well you you did have uh copies from, from budgets from departments but i have received some updated information from the school 
the town clerk, and as I said, the uh, insurance. Right. And, but now we'll essentially, now we'll be asking we're essentially for asking for brand new budgets. Oh, that, oh yes, budget. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. Yes, that that will be uh, ready. I will expect to have that ready um, on that Friday. Right. Okay. All right. All right. And then we we can pick it up or Friday before. Is there a way it can be? Well, I don't know. Well, whatever. I was going to say you could email it to us, but I don't want to print all that stuff. So. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, we'll uh, find a way. Can you put to it onto like a, a Google Doc or something like that? I, I prefer hard copies of things myself, particularly budget sheets and things like that. Okay. We'll find a way to get it to everybody. Okay. Um, I would just ask if if um, Brian, I, I get Daryl. It, it's certainly the board of selectmen and, and finance committee's call here, but. On um, there hasn't been any uh, vote taken to I don't believe there was anyway to postpone the annual election. Oh, and in the annual town meeting, um, normally you would be signing the warrant in in a week or two. Right. So uh, I you know have I'd like to feel that the the warrant articles are are pretty well complete and, and review it in its entirety with the board and, and the finance committee at the next meeting. Okay, and I think you're, you're right. I, we did not vote on the town meeting. We had voted, <clears throat> excuse me, the select board had voted on the election, I think, but not. Uh, no, 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 you didn't vote to do that. I thought, Lydia, I thought we did it with Lydia at the last meeting. No, you, you voted yeah, to. Yeah, we did. You you voted to extend it into June, but did not set a specific date. For the election? Correct. I thought we said June 23rd. I thought we no. said that while you were standing in Marlene's office. No. Well, I mean, it's no big deal. We can do it again. I'm just, yep. I just, we talked about it for 15 minutes. I can't believe we didn't vote on it. But. No, because because you weren't sure. Diane wanted more information about um what was happening when and so you were able to just say okay it's not going to be the 19th it's going to extend into june the law allowed you to do that but wanted to wait to set the actual date okay so you wanted june 23rd right that's what that's what i was because didn't we also say we're moving it back to town hall from the back office we did vote on that correct so we, we moved it back to the town hall that was a different vote Okay. But um, we did not actually set the date. We just postponed it, but to a date uncertain. You, the town election is moved to town hall. Yeah, we moved it back to town hall. Could, just throwing it out there. Given that you're trying to create space potentially, would it make more sense to do it at the high school gym? You have so much more yeah. room. No, because we can we're we're gonna be talking about limited hours um, because we don't have to have our regular seven a m to eight yeah. p m. You have to open it open up the polls at least by noon, and you have to have them open for at least four hours. So we're hoping, and the and the state's been recommending that we try to get as many people to early vote by mail. They're allowing us to early vote by mail for the town election. There isn't any in-person voting for early voting, only by mail. And that mailing can start as soon as your ballots are printed, as soon as you can get your ballots out. I've already got 29 applications for absentee ballots. And I'm waiting for a date so that I can get my ballots printed and have the date on them. So Lydia, Lydia, how would people, once you do have those, how would people get those? Or, or how do we e express it to people or educate people how to do that? Well, uh, there is a um, notice online I put up today with an early voting application that people can mail in to the town clerk once I received those and I have my ballots printed, then I send them out a, a ballot. Can we put it out over the phone thing? They're, they're recommending that you do the, the reverse 911 call. 
Um, I um, also they, code red. Th they suggested that we mail to every registered voter an application. And that's one of the things I had on the agenda for the um, finance committee was that that's going to throw my budget over um, for this fiscal year 20 so that I may be deficit spending on the election side to actually mail out applications to every registered voter. It's about $1,200 to do that. Um, and then on top of that, anybody that sends in an application, you have to mail them out the ballot. Do we think, I mean, just in terms of bang for the buck, what's the turnout in the town election? Uh, probably around 900. Out of? Out of, out of 2,400. Uh, I'm just mailing and spending $1,200 to mail yeah. an application to everybody, probably only which 30% of them are going to get sent back. Right. In a, well, I, I'm, I'm guessing that a higher percentage would be sent back because they're getting it handed to them you know, the application. They're getting it mailed to them. They don't even have to... They don't get the ballot, though, right? They just get an application, then they have to fill out the application, they have to send that back in, right. then they send them the ballot, then they send the ballot back in. Right. It'd be better just to mail them all a ballot. <laughs> I can't do that. Tell them to send it in. I can't do that. You can skip the whole first step. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm just... I'm, tr I'm trying to think of ways to keep my... Um, election workers safe as well because you have but it seems like if people choose my my concern with this whole process is that if people choose not to do the paper ballot the mail-in ballot or they forget or whatever and they want to vote that day you've now convict condensed the time frame and you could have a lot more people in a shorter time span right you're you're absolutely in a right. small that's, space that's, that's the You're going to have to put six foot marks out on the sidewalk so yeah. that people stay socially distant so, and, hope it, and hope it doesn't rain that day. Yeah, right. But no, I was already looking at the at the town hall and how I could keep that six feet distance and it, it would work. You, you, you're coming in the side door or coming in the front door. The, the hallway is wide enough to a certain point where you can keep the lines separate. And then you've got to stop the people at that point. And the next person can't go to register to vote until, you know, another person leaves. And you can only have, and, and you can only have so many people in the room at a time someone has to wash down the voting booths every time someone uses them. So you have to have an extra person. Well, yeah, that's so just, four that's, hours is just not sufficient for that. Or that's where- Even, even with people doing mail-ins. Right, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I can do the seven to eight like we normally do, which is what everybody expects. It's just more people, well, yeah. But that's or maybe, maybe there's, Something between twelve to four and seven to eight. I mean, maybe there's a different time frame. Or that's what Tom was asking about using the high school because then even if it rained or it was crappy weather out, uh, you know, people can yeah. be at least somewhat it, sheltered. It's well, it's just just doing it across the hall uh, yeah. over at the complex was was a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, everybody said it went smoothly and everything like that, but. Um, my election workers are not used to having an off-site precinct. Mm -hmm. I've always been the person that's the, you know, running the election. Whereas in bigger cities where you've got precincts that are in different people, there's a me at each precinct. They have a head person that does these elections all the time. Whereas we don't have that set up. Just running back and forth, back, back and forth to the, the complex, you know, whenever anything happened. It just, it's just not the way we've been set up. So to have you it- You couldn't stay there? Huh? You couldn't stay there? No, because I didn't come back here to do research about something. You know, if somebody was having, there was a glitch and somebody wasn't on the voter list or whatever. So yeah, no, I can't, 
I wasn't able to do both. So, yeah, no. Yeah, but we've never had such a situation like this, which is so, uh, you know, we're all trying. Everybody's trying right. to think of ideas. here, so. Right. I think that, I, you know, I mean, if, it, if it's raining and people, I mean, yeah. there's umbrellas, there's raincoats. I mean, it's not ideal, but to have everybody go through the, we do, we the process of moving we doesn't don't seem. lines like that at a, at, a, at a town election. We don't have big lines like that. So if we keep it open seven to eight, I'm just going to have, maybe have trouble filling spots, but they're also allowing us to do a skeleton crew. So, you know. But Lydia, my suggestion, I mean, you suggested like 12 to four. I'm just so, saying we- But I'm saying rather than seven to eight or 12 to four, maybe you do 10 to six or some, you know, well, a little yeah. bit of an expansion. I actually think, I said it has to be open for at least four hours. I okay. didn't get out the part that I was thinking possibly 12 to seven. Okay. So, so Lydia, when you're, when you're when you're close to this, can we do one of those code red phone calls to at least let people know oh, what yeah. they can do to help the whole situation? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I was hoping there was going to be some sort of mailing, like a tax bill or something, or that I could get out information to everybody. But you know, and and I mean, I what guess it, there's this. What would it cost for the mailing? Just the simple mailing. To go out, Lydia. To to let everybody know that they can yep. get applications. Yeah. Or to if I could do just a postcard to say, hey, you mm. can get an application where you can pick one up or some, because I could put them at the market in different places where they can pick it up. So then your postcard it okay. goes down to thirty five cents, mm. and then you can just send so it can, to every household, which is less too. I, I, can I, I make a suggestion? Can, I, I just want to. I just want to make a suggestion. Um, I, I think we should make the motion to move this election to June twenty third, and I'll make that motion officially in a second. But uh, some of this discussion, you know, things are changing really fast, and I guess there's also a possibility that some of the restrictions we're living under right now will be changed two months from now. Correct. So some of this discussion can hold off yes. until we know a little bit more about what life looks like on June 23rd, right. because we don't know and things are happening fast. Yes. So I think so. Hours or not change the amount of hours. There's lots exactly. Of so the, getting in the weeds on how we're going to actually do this is probably not necessary tonight, but I I would like to just move to to do that. So I'll, I need to do this officially, right, Lydia? Yeah. This actual, um, I move that pursuant to section one of chapter 45 of the acts of 2020, and because of the governor's declaration of a state of emergency to respond to COVID-19, the town election scheduled for May 19th, 2020, be postponed to June 23rd, 2020. I'll second that. Motion's made and seconded. Is there any further discussion on moving the date from the 19th to the 23rd of June? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Daryl, so well, I just wanted to give the finance committee a heads up that depending on the mailing or whatever, there is a possibility they'll I'll run into a I mean, in in your world, a small deficit. In my yeah. world, a bigger deficit. We'll, we'll we'll deal with whatever we. I pursuant to what Diana said, you know, if if you know, in a couple week, in a few weeks, if we find out that we have to make a mailing and it's going to run your budget over, we'll deal with it then. You okay. know, but Great. I think we understand. Okay. I'm, I'm Unless good. anybody else from the finance committee has a different opinion. No. So Lydia and Joe, while you're on, do you want us to make a vote to, at this point, make it uh, June 16th for the town meeting, or do you want us to? No, and I'm, 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 I'm fine with it. And if there was some second wave of this whole virus, you know, at least I want you all to be aware that between myself and Lydia, we can keep kicking it down the road by 30 days at a time if if it was that necessary. But I'm comfortable with that date. 
So we're so June sixteenth uh, would be the Tuesday, which is the week before the the general election. So yeah. um, all right, thanks, Joe. So uh, one of my colleagues would like to make that motion. Okay, I, I guess I'll move that pursuant to general laws. Chapter 39, Section 9, and in light of Governor's declaration of a state of emergency to respond to COVID-19, the annual town meeting scheduled for May 12th, 2020, be postponed to June 16th, 2020. Thank you, Ed. Is there a second? Second, sorry. That's okay. So there's a motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion on the annual town meeting being moved from May 12th to June 16th at this point? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thanks, Lydia. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. All right, All right. Brian, are you done with us? Um, Marlene, are we, are we, we're not going over, are we going over any? Yeah, I think we're good with the finance committee for tonight. Yeah, and, and can I just ask the other finance committee members if they, they have any questions or concerns that um, um, right now, or do any of you see a need that um, we should meet, you know, separately in the next couple weeks before um, the 19th? Is there sure. any? Uh, you want to meet in a couple weeks? Yeah. What, what's a date that works for you guys? Um, pretty much anything in the next couple. Hang on, I think. That would be uh, the week of the 5th, 4th, 5th, 6th. Sure. How about, how about May 5th? Ah, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> there we go. Betsy, Kim, Diane, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine with yep. me. All right, and then I'll, I'll I'll work with Marlene, and we'll figure out how we can do this through the computer thing. So, Daryl, just to clarify, this is just the board, uh, the um, finance committee meeting here. Yeah, yep. just finance committee, okay. but you know, obviously no, anybody else is welcome. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss something. Yeah, and perhaps you know it would be great if. Yeah, you know, okay. Daryl, can I ask a question before you go off the finance yeah, committee? Sure, John. I'm looking at this that you're asking for level two, five, and ten. Are you also looking at what, in addition to what our original, like our needs based assessment, our budget is as well, or are we just throwing that out the window? Uh, I don't think we're throwing anything out the window. Uh, okay, so I'm just asking because, you know, I do want to put. Oh, yeah, I also want to be able to present what, what, what you know, what are, what are basically what our original, what we yeah. need, but as opposed to starting at a level funded. I just want to clarify that that that's not the new starting place now. Level funded, and you can still look at an operating budget based on need as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I I agree. I mean, it. it John, it goes back to I think some of the tough decisions that are going to have to be made in the next couple. I understand of months that. Is, I definitely know. understand that, but I guess what I'm saying is basically a level service as well as looking at level yes. funded and then two, five, and ten. Okay, thank yeah. you. Level service would definitely be. be yeah. Okay. I just want to because I, I want to be able to clarify what I mean with the school committee. Okay. Yeah, because I I believe the budget you presented was essentially level service. Although it was 300 and whatever. Well, yeah, 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 exactly. But are we, are, we are looking to make reductions in a level service budget as well. We're not, we're not at the bottom. Yeah, we, but um, I just want to be able to, to have some direction right. for this. Community. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks, John. So, Daryl um, and Finance Committee Mayor, are you guys all set? for tonight. I'm not trying to get rid of you. You certainly can hang around, but I, I don't think we have any more, um, you know, combined uh, yeah. committee discussion. All good. I'm good. And and Marlene, if possible, could you be part of that May 5th meeting too? Yes, I can. Because that would be a good link. And obviously anybody else that wants to be a part, we would certainly welcome you. But, you know, um, it, it's always Marlene and, and Sharon, it's good to have you guys 
you know, to because you you speak well of what's going on in the finance side of things. So thank you. All right. So I guess I'll sign off. Uh, thank you. And thank you. Everybody have a good night. You thank you, Finance thank Committee. You thank you. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Good night. Nice to talk with the Finance Committee. Okay. Actually, I think we've only got one or two more items ourselves um, from a select board perspective. Yeah. Um, Was there there wasn't any was there anything else, Marlene, on topic five, which was the budget and the annual meeting that you wanted to address tonight? And no, there isn't. We do. Okay, so we took care of the election push the pushing the election out and pushing town meeting out, so we're good there. Yes. Okay. Um, under your report, I think we got everything above that. Uh, the community compact grant. Yes. So I um, submitted an application under the community compact best practices um, to. And, and I was I was quite surprised how quickly the uh, process went, and uh, we were accepted. So the Division of Local Services is awarding the town with eleven thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, that includes the setup and the annual subscription for one year for a, a, a software program, budget software program which I would like to see the town continue to use beyond that first year. This is a data-driven software program. Um, and I have, have communicated with a, a, a vendor in Massachusetts. Um, this uh, program comes highly recommended. Um, so I am in the process of, of signing off on the contract documents provided the Board of Selectmen is an agreement. Um, so again, the grant award is eleven thousand one fifty. That includes the setup cost and the annual subscription. The annual subscription is eighty seven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. The setup is twenty four hundred dollars. Um, so, and and I'd like to also add that this this program will be able to provide the town with with long range forecasting as well so it will we'll build our budget so we will no longer use the excel program or i mm -hmm. should say excel workbooks right um would, would it be uh and is it something that uh, I thank you by the way for for applying for and receiving that grant is it something that we should also have um, lots and heath be part of or are they familiar with this or you know what i mean just uh, absolutely. I, I would, okay. I believe that, that yeah, that I see no reason why they couldn't be part of it. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if they're familiar with that program. Yeah. It, the question was more about the whole long range planning. I know they're still doing their thing right now for 19 and 20, but yeah, yeah. but, but it'll, cer it'll certainly for us and what we do will be advantageous in using that Excel workbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. And and this is designed for municipalities. Right. Okay. So do you need a vote tonight to um No, I don't need a vote. It, it we're getting the first year, but you're you're, you're kind of laying the groundwork for future years for that. Yeah, annual. I don't oh. I don't know that we'll have um all the data uh entered into that program for this coming fiscal year. Probably okay. have to be the next fiscal year. All right. So do we, but we still have to pay for it for the coming fiscal year and we're not using it? The money is, we have two years to use the money. Okay. But, so, I, well, actually, I'm not sure, Diana, can you ask that question again? Well, we're, we, we get, the first year is funded by the grant. Correct. Right? Correct. But we're not going to be using it in the first year because we won't have the data entered into it. Well, I, I believe the first year will be when we're actually using it. I oh, okay. So, you know, oh, I, it, I'm just, not, so I think Diana, I don't mean to speak for Diana, but I think Marlene, the question is, is year one, the, isn't now, year one is the first year we use it, right? We, we, yes. we don't, we don't want to get the grant for now and then we're not using it at all. Is I think is. That's question. what I'm saying. If, yeah. right. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so year so one I, is really I, the first year of utilizing the workbook or the 
the um, forecasting right. Diane is looking for clarification. Is that right. first, yeah, is the first, when is the first year right. using it versus yeah. setting it up? In I, I mean, if right. we're talking about these significant budget cuts, I want to make sure if we're spending $8,700 on something, we're using it. Right. That's all. Yeah, yeah, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more okay. with that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but I, I can get clarification on that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I know. Does that year one start as soon as, you know, you contract with that vendor? And you start entering yep. your information. Right. right. I, I mean, see. that's then that's a whole lost year. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's very important, and, and I will find out. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, unanticipated new business, Marlene, Diana, Ed. I'd just like to quickly uh, just let the Board of Selectmen know, um, you, well, as you know, we've had the Gravity Thickener project going on at the wastewater treatment plant, and um, that is moving along. The old equipment has been demolished. Uh, the majority of the new equipment is installed, and uh, the engineer will be meeting with the wastewater plant operators tomorrow. They're meeting with an electrician just to coordinate the electrical uh portion of it. They estimate substantial completion uh, in about three to four weeks um, and the total project fully operational by June 1st. So I just I know we hadn't had an update. And then I also meant to let the board know last week, and I know you, you talk to Phil periodically, but if the public is interested and people probably have noticed that, you know, we have that water project in progress um, out on Chestnut. So, yes. Um, so between that and and the wastewater treatment plant project, things are moving along on the DPW side. Is there is there an estimated time frame that you're aware of on having Chestnut Street open and that project done? Uh, I don't have an estimated date for that, but I will follow up with Phil. Okay. Thank you, Marlene. Um, Thank you. Ed or Diana, did you have any other unanticipated um, new business? I don't. I don't. Marlene, did you have anything else that we needed to discuss this evening? Uh, I do not. Thank you. No, no, okay, no. well, be before we adjourn, I'd like to thank everybody, um, my colleagues, the Finance Committee, most of whom I think have dropped, and Superintendent Roberts and, and uh, all the guest speakers, uh, as, as well as the public who have joined as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a little different feel doing it this way, but it's the world we're living in right now. So uh, we appreciate everybody for joining and we appreciate everybody's patience. So. And, and, and I have to say, I you know, we're, we're dealing with a lot of variables and a lot of unknowns right now. And, um, you know, our department heads are going to be asked to, you know, give a lot of information based on facts they don't know, um, but we'll, we'll do the best we can and, uh, you know, get through this and, and, you know, we appreciate our department heads, um, very much for the work that they're going to need to do, and some, of which, some of which will hurt. No. And Marlene, thank you very much for, uh, for everything you're doing. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Everything. Go ahead, Ed. I'm sorry. I kept interrupting you. <laughs> I said we will survive. And with that, oh. we'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. All right. Motions made and seconded to adjourn. Uh, all those in favor, aye. aye. Thank you very much, everybody. And we're going to drop. We're going to drop the call. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too.